Alexa, what's the temperature outside? Right now, it's minus 5 degrees Celsius. Today, expect a high of 0 degrees. What's up, soldiers? Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. You guys heard what Alexa said. What Alexa didn't say. With the wind chill, it feels like minus 15 degrees Celsius. Just came back in from dropping my daughters to work. I'm on cold, I'm on chilly, I'm on need something to warm my soul. One thing comes to mind. And we've done this before. We've done the traditional version. But today we're doing Uncle Chris's version. Yes, a very festive version of cocoa tea. And you're going to see why I said it's festive and why it's different. Vibes it up. I've got five cups of milk on a very, very low heat. We don't want to burn that milk. We want it to gently come up to temperature because later on, if you burn that milk, cleaning that pot there is going to be a bit of a task. Two slices of ginger, a stick of cinnamon, cardamom seeds. I'm going to go in with two of those. I really love the flavor that brings to things. If you want to crack that, you can crack that. I ain't too worried about that. We've got bay leaf, two bay leaves, about well, one and a half cloves. And you know, you're looking at this and thinking, well, Chris, there's nothing unique about what you're doing there. That is how Granny made it. Two cloves. We ain't trying to go too strong with any one thing because we want that total balance of flavors. And you're right. Nothing strange, maybe the cardamom seeds, a little bit different. We need some nutmeg. Grenada in the house here. So we got that freshly, ooh, that freshly grated nutmeg. Now here's where things gonna get interesting. I have here four dried sorrel or hibiscus um, bulbs. That's gonna go in there. Yeah, we're making sorrel hot cocoa tea. Something you've never seen before. I've trust me on that. And then one cup of heavy milk, uh, cream, heavy cream. Now, if you can't get heavy cream where you at, um, evaporated milk, you know, just like our granny used to do. Now, if you wanted to go in there with coconut milk, you can certainly go the route of coconut milk. Now, keep this in mind, coconut milk can be a bit taxing on some people's stomach, so be mindful about that sometimes. You don't want to end up on the toilet. No, we don't want that. You know, if you think closely about the flavors involved in making sorrel, it's pretty much the same thing that we would use in making a nice cup of cocoa tea. I'm just giving that a quick stir. Now we will need something to sweeten this later on. And I am not going the route of my, my forefathers who would use sweetened condensed milk. However, I'll be using cane sugar. I've got some nice sugar cane, raw sugar cane sugar there. And I still got some of that honey I brought back from Quebec. That's what I'm going to use. But for now, we want to bring this up to temperature. And we want all those flavor ingredients to really shine through. So low and slow, don't rush it. This is our best cocoa tea we're making for the Christmas morning. Low and slow. Wake up early and do your thing. When I'm turning, ram sucking under the Christmas tree, put this up to boil. Put this up to boil. As that milk comes up to temperature there, what I'm going to do is some heavy whipping cream. Yeah, we make it a nice little whipped cream for the top. And the little Canadian twist to this. A bit of maple syrup. Mmm. Pure maple syrup. You know, and it's going to take some elbow grease now because you really got to to work this and whip that air into it and make it nice and fluffy but that maple syrup is going to give it that sort of earthy sort of sweet uh, when you top your hot cocoa tea with this now remember i told you guys we're doing it uncle christmas way right now if your boyfriend girlfriend and then, then whatever it is hona man hona woman and making a nice little whipped cream to go with your cocoa tea they ain't really like you eh? no there's no love there mommy make some It took a few minutes, but look at the nice, look at that. What does it say, peaks? Well, I'm sure there's some kind of peak in there. I'm not a baker and I don't really mess around with this thing too much, but I gave it a little testy test. 
Mm. That maple syrup, boy, and you need a pure maple syrup in and that and Jemima nonsense colored liquid water sugar. No, get some maple syrup in your life. If it's from Ontario and if it's from Quebec, even better. Oh, the whole of the East Coast United States getting vexed now. We're making good maple syrup up here too, you know, Chris. I know that. I know. I'm starting to see tiny bubbles on the side here. It will take about six, seven minutes because remember we said very low heat. You're watching and you're saying, well, Chris, where's the cocoa for the cocoa tea? Bam! Straight out of Dominica. Not Dominican Republic, but Dominica. One of my favorite cocoa. And this was brought to me, well, given to me by my friend who's from Dominica. And we're grating that in there. And if you don't know, this is what real chocolate or cocoa looks like. It's been, the parts has been uh, worked down and made into the cocoa. It's, it's spiced and everything else, but we're adding more flavor in here. And all I'm doing is grating that into the pot here. And that is where that cocoa tea or that hot chocolate or whatever you want to call it, that real flavor is coming from this. You know, and should be told, I'm big enough Dominica because I love the cocoa from there, but throughout the Caribbean, we've got good cocoa. Now, if you're talking about good cocoa, you can't miss out Trinidad Tobago. My great-grandparents had a cocoa and coffee estate. Sadly, I never got to try their product. But if you know a name of cocoa, you know where the home of the greatness is. And as I grate it in there, what I'm doing is I'm stirring it. Because that has to melt down and all those fats, and it's all about the fats from that cocoa is gonna give this even more richness. You know, we have all that milk in there, that heavy cream and everything else. And you know, there we go, sugar. We need sugar to sweeten that, but hold back. Don't overly sweeten it yet. And then that honey. Yeah, diabetics cringing right now, like myself. You know, I'm making this and I cannot enjoy this. I'm making it for the, the people in the house right now. Because I am diabetic and I tend to keep away from this. And this is why you don't see too many dessert recipes on the website. So we want this to sort of steep. So very low heat, as I said. And we want all those flavors to come together. We want those natural fats in that cocoa to really come out and shine through. And you know, it's something that back in the old days, man, I look forward to this thing like no tomorrow. Hmm. This was my Christmas morning right here. It's been about five minutes since I added the grated cocoa. Some people call it chocolate to the pot. This is hot, this is scorching hot, but what we need to do now is strain this and get ready to enjoy one of, if not the best, hot cup of cocoa. And we call, you know, and we, I'm keep saying cocoa tea, because anything hot in the mornings in the Caribbean, traditionally we call it tea. So it could be this, it could be, you know, any sort of hot beverage is considered tea. So this is cocoa tea. You just learn how to make Uncle Chris's version of a festive cocoa tea. And that sorrel, boy, it's gonna give it a lovely flavor. You know, it's done its job, it's done its job. Then it's a matter of serving up a nice cup of that there. And whoever we're getting this today, boy, it's all kind of love to show you yeah? in weeks and months to come. And don't forget, Uncle Chris also made whipped cream flavored with Maple syrup. Give it a taste. Adjust the sugar before you bring it out here. Yeah? But you know it's the best thing. 